Hi everyone, my name is Andriana. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the IFT here in Madrid, and today we are going to talk about theories with multiple space time dimensions. <laughs> you might have heard that we live in four space time dimensions three of space and one of time. This is actually something that can be experienced very easily because we can move left and right, back and forth, or up and down. And of course, every second that passes, we move through time. In theoretical physics, this is what we call the signature of space-time. Our perceived universe has a signature 3,1, where the first number is counting the number of space dimensions, when the second number is counting the number of time dimensions. The existence of time is actually very important. It turns space-time from Euclidean, like the geometry we learned in school, to Lorentzian which has unique physical properties. Let's see how this works. In the theoretical physics, distances are always encoded in the so-called metric. For two spatial directions, the metric looks like this, and it's practically an infinitesimal version of the Pythagorean theorem. Now, if we add the time direction, now we have something with a negative sign in the metric. And this is a small change in the sign, but it has tremendous physical consequences. Now, the distance squared can be positive, negative, or zero. We can illustrate this using the light cone. The light cone is a beautiful geometric tool that can tell us which events can influence each other. Events can be belong in three different uh, directions. Inside the cone, where we call them time-like separated, and then the distance squared is negative. Precisely on the cone, these events are called light-like separated, and the distance squared is precisely zero. And outside of the cone, and these events are space-like separated. There, the distance square is bigger than zero. Inside the light cone, the time-like separated events can be reached by moving slower than the speed of light. This means that you can reach them actually by walking or even driving. These events can have a cause and effect relationship with the present. On the cone, we have events that can be only reached by traveling at the speed of light. This is the limit of causal contact. Outside the cone, we have space-like separated events. No signal, not even light, can reach them. And you cannot influence or be influenced by them. Events there are happening somewhere in the universe, but they cannot have any influence on what is happening with you now in the present. For instance, no matter how hard the butterfly that is causally disconnected with you outside of the light cone is flapping its wing, it can never have caused a hurricane that you are experiencing right now. So, in Lorentzian space-time, not everything is connected. The light cone is acting like some kind of filter telling you what is accessible to each other and what is not. One could wonder what would happen if we allowed for more than one time direction. Physics would probably look very different than what we experience today. There are several puzzles that appear the moment we allow for more times. Let us explain them. The first problem is ghosts. Since time directions are coming with a minus in the metric, Often, theories with multiple time-like directions have negative energy states that are called ghosts. These are problematic because they lead to instabilities. Systems can decay into pairs of positive and negative energy states, releasing infinite energy from the vacuum. A second problem has to do with causality. In standard physics, the light cone is giving a clear distinction between cause and effect. With multiple times, the light cones are no longer cones. The geometry becomes much more complicated and they become some kind of higher dimensional structure. This makes it unclear which events can influence which and puts into question the standard arrow of time. With more than one time-like direction, there is no universal time parameter that all observers can agree upon. So, how do we know which event happened first and which afterwards? But let's forget about these puzzles for a moment and try to think about building theories with multiple times. A theory with, let's say, two space and two time directions will not be suitable to describe our universe since we can already experience three space directions. Then, to accommodate more time directions, we need to consider a theory with more space-time directions in total. Luckily, we already know of such a theory, and in particular, it is string theory. In fact, we have five superstring theories that live in 10 space-time directions. To connect them with our world, we usually hide away the six extra dimensions by a process called compactification. This means that the extra dimensions are very, very small and have some kind of complicated geometry and topology. The simplest compactification one can do is to just compactify a single direction, and now instead of having an infinite line, one can choose to put the theory on the circle. Now we have an effective nine-dimensional theory. This procedure actually reveals one of the most intriguing concepts in string theory, dualities. 
This means that theories that look to be fundamentally different in 10 extended space-time directions upon compactification actually are revealed to be like two sides of the same cup and practically indistinguishable from each other. For instance, type 2a string theory compactified on a circle is t-dual to a different string theory type 2b compactified on a circle of the inverse radius. In fact, many similar dualities exist, and they reveal that the five superstring theories that seem unrelated initially are actually deeply related to each other and the 11 dimensional M theory. In fact, we should be thinking of them maybe as sides of a die. Let's try to think of dualities using a simple analogy. Suppose you have a traffic sign with some words written in it, uh, maybe in Greek. And this would be actually a sign that makes perfect sense if you place it in Greece. But then if you brought the same sign and you placed it outside of the IFT here in Spain, it would be a totally useless sign. Here in Spain, one would actually need the dual description, would be the same sign, but now translated in Spanish. We can say then that this translation between languages is some kind of duality transformation. The meaning of the phrase is the same, but now the words that we're using to describe it are different. The same happens in physics. The theory is the same, but the degrees of freedom we are using to describe it are changing. Going back to theories with multiple times, what happens when we compactify in a time-like circle? If the initial theory had only one time to begin with, so a signature 9,1, then the resulting theory has only Euclidean objects and no notion of time. If the initial theory has more than one time, now we can hide away these extra times in this compact manifold and we may get a low-dimensional theory that only has one time and looks normal. In fact, Chris Hall studied this precise problem in the late 90s and discovered that instead of only the five normal superstring theories in signature 9,1, there is a much more complicated web of extraordinary string theories that are related to the normal one via dual transformations, and these theories live in a whole range of different space-time signatures. So, using dualities, we found a systematic way to go from normal theories to exotic theories with multiple times. But what is happening actually with the puzzles that we have discussed already? Do these theories make physical sense? The honest answer is that we don't know. However, since these theories are dual, to perfectly normal string theories, many physicists believe that these problems will actually disappear on once we have access to the full theory of quantum gravity. Right now, for instance, the ghost may signal instability, but one can argue that they are actually not part of the physical stage of theory or that they somehow will cancel out. Going back to our analogy between dualities and translation, one can actually view these dualities between normal and exotic string theories as now instead of trying to translate a traffic sign, trying to translate something more complicated, like an idiomatic expression. For example, consider the expression, I'm running out of time. If we literally try to translate it word for word, estoy corriendo fuera del tiempo. This doesn't make any sense in Spanish. What we need to do is to take context into account. And this is, of course, harder to do when we don't know a language well, similarly to how we don't really know the full structure of quantum gravity. So, I hope we have convinced you that theories with multiple times deserve a little bit of our attention. And I will finish with one question for you. Could it be that we live in a 3,1 subspace of an exotic string theory? So, since I'm running out of time, bye!